Hi, my name is Vasily Mrosnochenko. I'm from Ukraine. My name is Katja Gershak. I come from Slovenia. My name is Lars Ragnar Hansen. I, I come from Norway. I'm Hannah. My name is Radu Magdin. I'm an analyst and consultant. I come from Romania. I work as a diplomat with the Norwegian Foreign Service. And I work as a human rights and forced migration researcher. I'm a co-founder of a small NGO, Regional Dialogue. I am strategic communications advisor and uh, was a co-founder of Ukraine Crisis Media Center. The past few days have been wonderful from a lot of perspectives. I look to you to play your part too. I expect that the leader stands for something. I expect that the leader has a vision. Foreign ministers, prime ministers, deputy prime minister, British deputy prime minister spoke to us twice. This summit is taking place at a time when there is yet again a, an unprecedented fragmentation and fluidity in world affairs. Today this alliance is once again called upon to demonstrate its historic ability to adapt. It's very important to be in touch with real life events and with the stakeholders that matter. We are now again facing decisive, strategic and operational challenges. But Russia's actions uh, in and around Ukraine over the last six months have swung the focus of NATO's attention firmly back to its roots. What's your view on uh on maybe unilateral sanctions which Britain could impose on Russia as a country which assured Ukraine of its territorial integrity because London could do much more to actually put pressure on the Putin's cronies. And the new period of adaptation will require the same level of innovation, robust ideas and creative redesign of the military posture to set the alliance on a stable foundation and a trajectory for the future that we see. Also some very interesting discussions internally. I'm very impressed by the level of people who are attending. I sense there is um, a high degree of openness from, uh, from stakeholders to integrate lots of the comments. And I think that's very positive. That's why we must carry on the transformation of this alliance together because it is crucial for our peace, our security, and for the peace and security of future generations. The, the part that was the most important for me here is not only the interaction with the peers but the the openness with which we can discuss ideas even when they're controversial. I think my favorite aspect has been getting to know the other delegates, um, talking to them about their ideas and for me actually spending time with people quite different from me. What my contribution I believe has been is to point out that some of the assumptions under which we're viewing the world may not no longer be relevant and I've taken this opportunity and pointed this out to a number of a uh, number of policymakers, a number of leaders and I believe that that's the strength of the system is that we can come out and say this and we can start to address this because that is going to uh, shape our future. Normally I work in kind of development, human rights, people who kind of do all the same things with me and you, I don't think you learn much if you're always with people who kind of think the same ideas. You need to be with people who have a different mindset, different approach, different kind of pressures on their work. This is useful for me to really get new perspectives, discuss the same topics off the record with colleagues from other countries where you can have an exchange of views that, are, that is more frank and more down to earth than what you will usually have in other fora. You believe in NATO, you are young leaders, and you can decide what your future will be.